Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Of course if you're tuning in for the first time welcome aboard. Please do hit like and subscribe down below. Today we're going to discuss some important changes that will affect any of you flying for our Osprey Airways virtual airline. And uh, it actually includes the transition to a completely new system called New Sky. Throughout the next few minutes we're going to work ourselves through the app how to create, set up an account, familiarize yourself with some of the settings, the airline SOPs, how to book and fly flights. You'll find two modes available on New Sky when you do create an account. There is a scheduled mode and a free flight mode. Scheduling allows you to fly our particular specific route network for Osprey Airways around the world. If you depart, for example, a flight from Manchester to Skiathos, or indeed Mykonos, where we're located for this section of the video, the aircraft will remain in Mykonos until it is flown back to base, as would happen in real-world operations. Free flight, however, gives you the opportunity to operate whichever aircraft in the Osprey fleet you want to fly, and whichever route you wish to fly as well. They both incur expenses, penalties, and profit loss for the airline. The first step that you want to take is to head over to the New Sky website, the link for which will be in the description down below, and set up an account by registering on the tab of the left hand side. Once you've successfully registered and you've got your account and your profile set up nicely, you will then be able to search and join your virtual airlines of choice. For joining Osprey Airways as we transition to this system, all you need to do is search airlines by pressing the tab on the left and you can either scroll and find it or you can type BVX in the search bar on the top right or type Osprey Airways or Osprey into the search bar and you'll see that it will pop up. By selecting it, it will give you the splash page for the airline and it will give you an option within here to join up. The application will then be sent away and it will be approved as quick as we can to get you onboarded into the new airline on New Sky. We're bringing over all of our tours from FS Hub to New Sky, so you'll be able to complete those as well and fly the world using our tour system. You can view our pilots and our scores along with our fleets as well, wherever they're based in the world and the particular configurations of them. And you can see our operations tab as well, exploring routes in action and some of the routes scheduled on the network too. Once you've joined Osprey Airways, it'll appear in your My Airlines section of New Sky. I would highly recommend at the very bottom left on the screen to visit the New Sky Wiki and have a good read through to understand how the system works, how the rating system works and how the flight tracking system works. To book a flight, all you need to do is click the My Flights tab and press the plus to book a flight. And this is where you get those two options that we mentioned before, free flight or schedule currently and in the future charter and cargo. Free flight still works with the economy model, it still makes profit or loss for the airline, it still gives you a score which includes the penalties, but it gives you the flexibility of selecting whatever route you want in the world and to fly whichever aircraft you want. So click through the options as we just have and then you can set whichever flight number you want. You can press the button on the right hand side to randomly generate a flight number for you if you wish. And then you can set your lights up as you want to. By typing in a departure and an arrival, you can then select the aircraft uh, that you want to fly. Only 10 are displayed on this list at any one time. So if you can't see the one you want to fly, just search for the ICAO code inside that tab and select it when it appears. Ensure your departure time is set accurately. This is your off blocks time, not your takeoff times. This is the moment you take the chocks away and you push away from the stand, the departure. Set that accordingly based on the time you're going to be flying in the sim and it's going to be a departure time in UTC or Zulu time. It should then automatically generate a flight duration from takeoff to landing. Uh, you can amend that if you want to, but my recommendation would be to keep that the same. Once you're happy, press book flight and you will then see it appear at the top of your my flight section it will give you the passenger load so 144 out of 162 passengers 
on the MD-88 for that particular flight to Kiev that we've just booked. And some options on the right hand side as well. So in the New Sky app it will give you the option to start the flight. But here you have the option to generate OFP in Simbrief. By clicking this it will automatically generate your OFP for you on Simbrief. First time you use this however it will ask you to link your Simbrief account into New Sky. Once it's done, down the bottom, you say you see the little green box that says OFP fetched. If you make a mistake or you decide not to fly that route anymore, or you want to change the route, something else, you can just delete the booking like so. Make sure if you're not going to complete your flight that you delete the booking, otherwise the airline incurs a significant cost which will affect the competition of the airline against all the others within the new Sky system. On the completion of a flight, you will have a report generated. It will show you all the different points that the system logged during the journey, including any problems like an emergency that you could declare during the flight. If you declare an emergency for whatever reason, your score disappears because you've had an emergency and also the expenses, penalties, revenue and the balance of the flight become wiped out as well. You can still see a summary at the top to see where you landed, how good your landing was as well with a touchdown score, so on and so forth. Even in free flight mode, on normal conditions you will generate a score out of 10. But it will also incur an expense to the airline, which will include things like fuel used, fuel burnt, ground handling fees, delays to push back, so on and so forth. It will then also incur a revenue based on ticket price, cargo costs, profit, the money generated by the airline. And then those two subtracted against one another creates the profit or loss for that particular sector flown. The second mode that we talked about was schedule mode or as we're calling it as well indirectly real mode. To book one of the scheduled routes you head back to the booking tab, select schedule Osprey Airways and then you're greeted with a different display this time. What you will find on the left hand side are all of the routes available. This will grow and expand over time and then the route map showing you the different options available to you. On the left you will see the flight numbers, the aircraft that can be flown on each route and then also the days of the week they operate. Routes that are blocked off in blue are ones that have been booked by pilots flying on the network and ones in grey are ones that aren't available to be flown because they need the aircraft in those locations first. So how does this work? Scheduled mode is the one where the airline can generate the most amount of profit and therefore be most competitive in the system. If you book, for example, the Osprey 308 flight from Heathrow to Athens in the Boeing 737 that is available, that will mean that you're taking that aircraft to Athens where it will remain until it is flown back. As a result of that, it will require you or somebody else to operate the service back. And as we can see here, the Osprey 309 is currently booked for an aircraft to be flown back from Athens to Heathrow, ready for some other services, as would be the case in real life. Once you've settled on a route that you would like to fly, you can select it and it will automatically populate the flight number, departure, arrival and duration for you. You can amend the departure time and select the aircraft available. If there is only one airframe available for the route, you will only be given one option. Please make sure when you do connect to New Sky to actually fly the scheduled flight, you are selecting and flying the correct aircraft that you have booked for. When you're happy, press book a flight. Again as before, if you make any mistakes or you need to cancel the flight and you can't complete it, ensure that you delete the flight within 60 minutes. As we saw with free flight mode, you can generate your OFP and SIM brief immediately with one click 
by pressing the little clipboard icon on the top right. Heading over to the New Sky Wiki, this is where we will find all of the information in relation to the booking system, the way the rating system works, and all of the other information you need to understand and know whilst getting used to Osprey Airways on New Sky. The rating system is what we want to focus on in this little section of the video. It's the most important for getting the scores, but also generating and protecting the revenue of the airline going forwards. If you declare an emergency for whatever reason in one of those high fidelity aircraft, for example, you get a rapid depressurization in cruise, naturally that would affect the score. The system protects you by reverting the score to an emergency category instead and therefore it doesn't count towards either the airline nor the pilot's average. It will then also make sure that the flight balance is reverted to zero so there are no penalties, there's no revenue and no expenses incurred for that flight. Crashing is pretty significant. If you crash the aircraft in any way using any of these particular conditions the airline receives a one million dollar penalty uh, and it's enough to struggle to recover from so do be really careful. There's a cheating system which protects against time acceleration, slewing, mid-air refueling, mid-air zero fuel weight change and any aircraft change different to that for the one that you've booked. So be really careful that you don't do any of those. The basic section talks about some of the things that it will monitor throughout the duration of a flight. You need to make sure that you've got the correct altimeter setting below and above transition level or altitude, making sure you set standard above transition altitude and the local below transition level. If there's power to the aircraft at any point, the navigation or POS lights need to be switched on and the beacon lights need to be on at all times when the aircraft is moving on the ground and in the air. Strobe lights are mandatory items when crossing any active runways, entering any runways and in flight. And the landing lights need to be off above 10,000 feet above ground level. Otherwise, any of these could incur slight penalties to your score. And it's all about flying realistically, flying accurately, and as close to true to life as we can get. Stalling and overspeeding and exceeding the g-forces of the aircraft incur penalties as well, naturally, in addition to any early or delayed departure, late gear retraction, or late gear and flap configuration on approach. This one is set to our airline SOP of 400 feet. There's a 100 foot buffer with the default SOP from New Sky. So around 500 feet above ground level or above the airfield elevation, you need to make sure that your landing configuration is set and completed and not touched beyond that. There are various other penalties. If you exceed the maximum landing weight, for example, or the crosswind maximum component for the aircraft that you're operating, so it's worth having a good scroll through the wiki to get familiar with the entire scoring system to make the most out of it. In relation to landing specifically, they're assessing to make sure that you land within the touchdown zone. They're also looking at your landing rating. So they don't want butter anymore because it's inaccurate. It promotes floating over the runway. It could delay ground activation of spoilers, auto brakes and thrust reversers. What they're actually looking for is a perfect touchdown between 1.06 G and 1.4 G in normal weather. If you're flying in some particularly bad weather, that threshold actually then changes to a perfect touchdown between 1.11 G and 1.6 G. And the scores then around that also change between greased and terrible. Now we're going to aim to create some documentation to help you get used to the transition across to the new sky system but we're also happy to answer any questions that you might have in relation to the new software and the way flights are now recorded. The two modes are there for the flexibility of having that realism, flying with an economy model so trying to be a really competitive profit making airline but it also gives you guys the opportunity to have that slightly increased realism with the way the aircraft move around the network in that scheduled mode. So if an aircraft is flown from A to B, it stays at B until it's flown back to A, so on and so forth. Get stuck into all the documentation and the new Sky program. 
get familiar with how it all works and I look forward to you applying and flying for Osprey Airways in the very near future. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.